Welcome to Think Like a Nurse, the video outreach of Keith RN. Today's topic, the five rights of clinical reasoning. Now, in order to transform nursing education, clinical reasoning must be front and center in nursing curriculum and situated in both the clinical and classroom settings. This is an essential paradigm shift identified by the Carnegie Foundation's educational research headed by Patricia Benner and written about in Educating Nurses, a call for radical transformation. If nurse educators are to have credibility with our students, we too must embrace educational best practice if we expect our students to write papers and to use nursing interventions based on best practice in our programs. But in addition to the five rights, and now there's more than five, there's seven, eight, and even ten that I have seen in the literature related to safe medication administration that every student and educator can readily list from memory because they are constantly grilled. Can you readily as a nurse educator or as a student, do you know and can you identify the five rights of clinical reasoning, which in reality is nurse thinking that is essential to our programs and to nursing education? If you were not even aware that these rights existed, and they do in the nursing literature, now is the time to identify, memory, memorize, apply, and integrate into your curriculum these five rights so students can be prepared for practice. But before we go there, let's lay a foundation that includes a deep understanding of clinical reasoning. Let's go back and go to our definition. Clinical reasoning defined as simply this. The ability of the nurse to think in action and reason as the situation changes over time by capturing and understanding the significance of clinical trajectories and to grasp the essence of the clinical situation. The ability of the nurse to focus and filter clinical data in order to recognize what is most and least important so a problem can be identified if present. Now as we know, patients in any care setting rarely stay static. They either improve or they can begin to swirl in the wrong direction and require the nurse to recognize the need to rescue before it is too late. This is the strength of clinical reasoning when applied to practice. So let's make it a priority in nursing education to make the following five rights just as well known and memorized by every student who leaves our program to ensure safe practice. The first right of the five rights of clinical reasoning is simply this, the right cues. Now cues are the clinical data collected and clustered by the nurse, recognizing the relevance and the relationships of this clinical data and then contextualizing this to your patient is the very essence of this right. When early cues or clinical data are missed or not identified or recognized this allows a complication to progress and is a classic example of failure to rescue by the nurse. The second right of clinical reasoning is the right patient. Now this right is not about checking the name and date of birth of your patient just like you do with the med pass and make sure it is the right person I'm taking care of. No, the importance of the nurse to identify if your patient is a high risk for developing a potential complication. The nurse must be able to recognize, for example, that an 18-year-old with an appendectomy is not as likely to develop a potential problem or complication as a patient with the same problem who is 78 years old. This also involves recognizing who is a susceptible host based on their age or the problem that they came in with, if they're immunosuppressed because of prednisone or HIV. Number three, the third right is the right time. Now the right time, this refers to the timeliness of identifying a high-risk patient among multiple patients that the nurse will care for, recognizing again early signs of a complication and then initiating nursing interventions in the, at the right time and in the right sequence is imperative to practice. Remember this, that failure to rescue is not just missing 
a complication that develops, but is actually when a nursing and medical intervention is not started in time and is started too late. If sepsis, for example, is not identified early and is allowed to progress, if we do not intervene at the right time, that person can still have a bad outcome and can even die as a result. Number four is the right action. The right action is simply this. Once a clinical judgment is made by the nurse, the right action or intervention must be undertaken then by the nurse. Did you know that on a typical med surge floor over an eight hour shift, a typical nurse engages in 50 significant clinical reasoning concerns that require a clinical judgment. Now, clinical data that suggests a potential complication must be acted upon. The consequences of an incorrect clinical judgment can make the difference between life and death. In one study, half of patients who had cardiac arrests on the floor of a hospital had clinical signs of deterioration 24 hours before the arrest, but they were not acted upon by the nurse. And number five, the final right, is the right, the right reason. Now this right, the right reason is not just making the correct reasoning that leads to a nursing judgment, but understanding the rationale or the why of everything that you as the nurse do in practice. In order to do this consistently, the nurse must be able to apply clinical reasoning to the bedside, which includes grasping the essence of the current situation and to put the clinical puzzle together in order to see the big picture. In my recent book, Think Like a Nurse, in the appendix, I have a template of clinical reasoning questions to develop nurse thinking. I also have this handout as a free download for any student or educator who would like to see for themselves this deconstruction of clinical reasoning, a breaking down step by step of practical situations of what clinical reasoning is and how it reflects how a nurse thinks in practice. Instead of flipping your classroom, you can flip your clinical by using this template of questions that reflect how a nurse thinks in practice instead of a traditional three-part NANDA diagnostic care plan. I have other vlogs and videos on this topic. Please check out my channel, Think Like a Nurse. Now, Rob Morris, nursing faculty from College of the Sequoias in California, took this plunge and he wrote me this response. I just finished my first clinical rotation of using Keith's clinical reasoning care plan instead of the traditional care plan. Great success. The students loved it, I loved it, and they report feeling much better prepared for patient care. Now this can be your experience as well. Obtain this free template on my website or situated from what is found in my book. And it is my hope and prayer that you will catch the vision to make clinical reasoning the centerpiece of your program and be a part of the needed transformation in nursing education to promote better outcomes for the patients our students will soon care for.